What's up scavengers, and Scandinavia here. In this video, we're going to go through how to pin and preserve your dead ants and other invertebrates. So let's get to it. But before that, I just want to give a huge shout out to my man over at C Meister Beat for making this awesome custom track in the background. Seriously, go check him out. He has some amazing talent in my opinion. But now, let's get into the video. So, here the collection is. Pretty cool, eh? Alright, the right side holds ants, as, well, they are my primary goal of collecting, and the left, other invertebrates. First off, let's take a better look at that mantis. Some of you OG scavengers might remember this girl from a previous video, when I showcased my mantids. They were a thrill to keep, but now two of them are dead. One of them is this one, my Papa Spursa, named Woody. She was awesome to keep, and by far my favorite, and I am glad I did not just throw away the body as it is much cooler having her preserved like this, or like I did with my other male mantis by preserving him in rubbing alcohol. I posted about that on my Instagram, go follow that if you haven't, to get some sneak peeks on my projects, as well as information and updates on my animals. Isn't she just beautiful? I admit that I kind of failed some of the pinning, as some of the legs came off, as well as the antenna, but at least the wing and the head were intact. It was my first time ever attempting to pin a mantis, and by that standard, I think it turned out really nice. Now for this fella, a large rhino beetle. I caught this dude in Spain and brought him home, legally, for those who were wondering. He lived in my beetle tank for a couple of weeks, but then oddly died. Super strange, I could never figure out why. It could have been traveling stress, humidity, food, soil, lighting, temperature or whatever, but I guess it is what it is. At least I think I did a rather good job pinning him. I'm especially happy about the wings, and the wing covers, he's just so magnificent. Just take a look at that huge horn, amazing. Now this is one small scorpion, but it's also from Spain, I really don't know why this one died either, since my other scorpion that I took home is well alive and eating, super odd. I'm quite pleased on the pinning on this scorpion too, I just love that small stinger it has, so cute. But now, let's get to the ants. Ok, so first I want to make a little disclaimer, most of these pinnings are very old, and back then I didn't really know how to pin them in a good way, so I just siliconed their thorax to a pin, which turned out not so good. I mean, you can see the ant, but it doesn't look so pretty, does it? In time, I will exchange all of these with new, better pinned ants, but for now, they are still there. Some pinned ants, however, I like a lot, like this wood ant queen for example which I found dead actually, super lucky. I also like these Campo Queens, their size never stopped to amaze me. This exact species is actually Campanotus ligniperda, which is supposed to be the largest ant in Europe, so that's pretty neat. Just compare them to these super tiny Fidoli that are collected in Spain. And yes, I know, I used the old method on these ones too, but I mean come on, Fidoli workers are just far too small to pin. I just want to say that all queens here was either found dead or died in test tubes due to infertility or other reasons. So no queen you see here was actually killed, and I think there's some sort of ethics in that. But enough showing, let's get to the pinning. So these are the ants and other invertebrates that have died lately that I will pin. So the first step is to fill up a small container with water and mix in some dishwashing soap. Stir around with your finger, not to create foam, but rather to create a good blend. Then, dump in the dry and dead invertebrates and let them soak there for about 24 hours or so. The soap will make them soft and bendable and easy to pin. This is the part that I didn't really know when I started pinning and therefore I just went on and siliconed them on their thorax, but trust me, this method is much, much cooler. After that, just remove them and start pinning. I'm going to start by pinning this jumping spider. I start off by piercing the center of the head with the main pin, but before that you want to make sure that the legs are taken away from under the body, otherwise the main pin might destroy the legs, plus the legs will spring the body up whilst you try to pin it down. Next, straighten and place out the legs. This step is rather difficult as you have to be hard when bending the legs, but not bend them too hard as then the legs will break, as you will unfortunately see me do later. When pinning legs. Take one needle and hold the leg in its rough position. Then take another pin and pin it diagonally as a stopper for the leg. Then take a third pin and put it diagonally from the other side over the leg, therefore forcing the leg down and fastening it. 
I use this method on most legs, but some are already in a good position, so I just use one or two pins or so to make sure that they stay in that good position. Next up, we have this Formica Fusca worker. I was not sure if I would be able to pin through the thorax of her, since it was rather thin. But, well, after some persistence and fail attempts, I finally got it through. Awesome! I then continued doing the same procedure as before, pinning the legs down with diagonally placed pins. I think this one turned out really great. Now for a more failed attempt, and a demonstration on the fact that this is not an easy task, as well as persistence and patience is key to doing this. I was going to pin a rather easy subject, a queen, in fact a laces queen, which means that she has a rather wide thorax. I started with the main pin and everything went on smooth, but then I started to fiddle a bit too much with this leg, and this happened. Well, the leg kinda fell off. You can sort of make out my frustration when I started bending the pins like this. Well, even after that setback, I figured to keep on going. Pinning the other legs and the antennae went on smooth. Well, there you go. No matter how careful you are, accidents still happen. After that, you should wait a day or so, and then start removing the pins. However, if you're pinning larger insects, I would suggest leaving them for at least 3 days. But small ants like this usually dry up within one day. To be sure though, wait 2 days. Here you can see what pins I'm using. So be really careful in this step when removing the pins, since this time the legs are all dry and really really stiff. Just a tiny bit of pressure will break off the limbs, as I did again on the fortunately already broken queen. Well, here you see how easy it is to screw this up. Well, there we have it. That's how I pin my dead insects and spiders. I just went on and placed them in the collection and it is all done. Thank you so much for watching this short video on how I pin my insects and spiders. And I also hope you at least got a bit inspired to start your own collection, since now you know how to do it. Before you click off, please just take a second to vote here on what type of videos you want to see more of. I have a few planned out, but I just want to see what you guys like and don't like. Until next time, have a good one, scabs. Bye!